What's up everybody, this is Danny, and Samsung has just announced both the Galaxy S7 and the S7 Edge. So in this video, I'm going to compare the two and break down the top new features of both of these phones. So let's go ahead and get started. First, let's talk about the hardware. It's a very familiar design, and let's say it's an evolutionary progression in terms of feel and experience. It's still glass on the front and back, but now it's covered by Gorilla Glass 5. It's a little thicker actually because it houses a larger battery on both of them, a 3000 milliamp hour battery for the S7 and a 3600 milliamp hour battery on the S7 Edge. And the SIM card slot integrates a return of the micro SD card slot, which is great, and up to 200 gigabytes of expansion is possible. And on the rear of the S7 and both the Edge get a curve on the back, very similar to the Note 5, and this is a great design choice because the prior S6 Edge Plus had a sharper corner where it digs into the back of your hand, but no more, and I say it's a subtle but nice improvement and feels nicer all around. The camera hump is also smaller and the home button with the fingerprint sensor is also more flush to the body, giving it a more cohesive look. Both of these phones keep that premium feeling all around, but with that glass enclosure, it remains a fingerprint magnet and also a slippery device, so I'll be sure slapping one of these hot new bamboo skins from Dbrand on the back as soon as I get one, for it looks awesome on my S6 Edge, and I will leave a link down there below for you if you're wondering on how to buy one. Powering the new Galaxy devices is either a super powerful Snapdragon 820 processor with 4GB of RAM, or an Exynos 8890 processor also with 4GB of RAM. Should be a powerhouse either way, and I did forget to mention that the display now has an always on mode where you can check your notifications and time without unlocking the phone. Here's a quick breakdown of the difference of the S7 and the S7 Edge. The Edge is a larger phone with a 5.5 inch display and the S7 has a more compact 5.1 inch display. The displays are both equally sharp and vibrant because they are Super AMOLED panels, exactly what you would expect, super deep blacks, vibrant color, nice and bright, and Samsung had arguably one of the best displays on the market last year and they don't disappoint here with these new flagships. The main difference with the Edge is that it has a curve to each side of the screen giving it a slightly different feel and it gives you access to shortcuts with the Edge screen gesture. This year you get more customization options where on top of adding your favorite contacts, you can now add custom tasks to this Edge shortcut and you can also opt for news and much more. With third party app developers able to access this feature, we can see a lot more features down the road which would be nice. What I love is both of these phones are now water resistant with an IP68 rating, so if you drop this in the pool, sink, or let's just face it, maybe even the toilet, there is no need to worry anymore. The most interesting upgrade in my opinion is the new camera this year. It is a brand new 12 megapixel camera, which is thought to be the elusive Sony IMX260 sensor with dual pixel focusing, which in my short time of testing is super fast. This is all combined with optical image stabilization and face detection autofocus making this one of the most promising cameras this year so far. I love the fact that they chose a lower megapixel camera with an aperture of 1.7 to increase the size and the amount of pixels which should equate to better low light performance and better images. You still have the same camera software from the last generation with some improvements and the front facing camera is 5 megapixel with a improved aperture of 1.7 and the shutter speed is incredible on both sides with a wicked fast burst mode. Manual camera mode is also here and you can adjust everything to get that perfect shot including now shutter speed, ISO, white balance and manual focus. Unfortunately not all of these features are available in video mode which is kind of a bummer. You'll notice that the native aspect ratio has changed to 4 by 3, but you can choose a 16 by 9 option, but it will be cropped at 9.1 megapixels. Not a big deal whatsoever. These samples off this camera look great, so I will definitely test this out thoroughly in the full review, so stay tuned for that. To round things up, both of these phones come with built-in wireless charging, which is amazing, and I think more manufacturers should include this for it's really convenient. Quick Charge 3.0 is also available, but Samsung decided to stay with the micro USB instead of the newer USB-C port, and there is that single speaker still. I was really hoping for some dual speakers or some other kind of arrangement. 
all around though, it's exactly what I expected from the new Samsung flagships. It's a more refined and evolutionary progression of the Galaxy phones. I can't wait to get them in for a full review, so let me know what you guys want to see in the comment section below. Make sure you smack that like button if you enjoyed this video, and let me know which one you like the best, the S7 or the S7 Edge. Subscribe for a lot more coverage and a lot more videos like this, and thank you for watching guys. I will see you in the next video.